Hi, everybody. How are we doing? Everyone good well? Awesome. I'm Spiros. It's super great to be here on stage with actual people for once. I don't know about you, but this is my very first uh, in-person event in like three years. Uh, am I the only one? Is there anyone else who's the first? Cool. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, for me, it's very refreshing. Usually in the past years, I did this in my living room or in a room with sweatpants on, you know, my little light in, on top of the camera and like a big sign on the door that said like presenting or live, do not disturb. Uh, usually it didn't work, but you know, it's fine. Um, so today I'll be taking you through work we've been doing for the past few years, uh, what OpenCRE.org is, and uh, how it can help you to master application security uh, for like a short intro, I guess, or for those at home who need to uh, change tabs and do something else, uh, a summary. <laughs> um, OpenCRE is a website that links the content of uh, individual standards together. It allows you to see how you can, for example, check a thing with the ASBS, find out how to test it with uh, the testing guide, find out how to automatically test it with Zap and uh, learn more, more about the vulnerability by reading, for example, what NIST has to say about it, right? Um, it pretty much brings everything together. Uh, more details about it later, but first a couple of things about me. Uh, my name is Piros. You can find me on Twitter at 0xfd. Uh, I work as an application security lead at a company called Thought Machine. It's a fintech. As pretty much everything in London, uh, we are also hiring, also multiple positions. Uh, and um, when I'm not working for fintechs, I co lead the OWASP integration standards projects. And I'm in generally an open source developer in my free time. Uh, we built Dracon, I've uh, contributed code to Zap, SKF, other stuff. And I'm also an OWASP volunteer for like more than 10 years now, God, I'm old. Anyway, um, so how did this start? Um, three years ago, we got on a call with some of us people and we tried to solve a problem. We found that finding information in OWASP is hard. It's, OWASP has more than 250 projects, a lot of talks, a lot of documentation, and figuring out how these things mesh together it's not an easy task. Uh, usually it's kind of the secret between a successful application security program and a less successful application security program. So we use, I use my amazing draw IO skills, as you see, like work of art, uh, NFT coming soon. And um, I built this, it's pretty much the DevOps cycle. And in every state of, what I considered back then to be a, the DevOps cycle. I added uh, with the help of many, many uh, great volunteers, uh, links to OWASP projects. So for example, when you gather requirements, you might need uh, ASVS or MASVS. When you uh, design things and you need to threat model stuff, you might need ThreadDragon or PyTM. Uh, in training, you know, OWASP really signs, uh, things like that. And we build this. This is now on the uh, projects page of OWASP, and all of these are clickable because it made sense. You don't need to like search the internet for why what PyTM is. You might never find it uh, with such a short name and stuff like that. But in building that, we realized that there is a wider problem here. Um, finding any relevant security information specific to what you need is kind of uh, a pain. Uh, for example, uh, ECSO 2018 published a study of an overview of existing cybersecurity standards. Um, it's more than 200 pages. Like, why? Uh, the 200 pages to secure your stuff? Like, come on, man. We can do better, right? Um, the problem is because there is such a disconnect between standards. Uh, when a standards writer uh, writes something, they try to cover everything. And instead of focusing on adding value. So if you have a standard on 
uh, cryptography, it might not cover one specific cipher or one very specific use case of cryptography, but it might try to cover everything. Like here's how you should do cryptography, including secrets management, including session tokens, things like that, or including passwords. And this is unnecessary effort and you add a lot of inconsistencies and of course incompleteness because there is no way you can cover everything. If we could cover everything in security, we wouldn't be here, right? Like, would be so. Um, however, as the integration uh, standards project, we wanted to do something about it. And the CRE is a key initiative. So let me explain. I said a lot. Um, and NISA, a few years ago, and it's a European Center for Cybersecurity, uh, a few years ago released a, a study on security in the EU. And it pretty much can be summarized by, we need a standard that links standards because there are so many standards out there. Uh, I think there is a comic about it, but pretty much that's what I said. Uh, develop, we need to develop a common repository for shared security measures. And why did they say that? Well, let's take an example. Uh, let's say you are a NISA or uh, in a smaller way, you are just it, Sheriff here, and you're trying to create some uh, recommendations or a standard for consumption by humans. So pretty much what you need to do. So you take as a topic secrets management, right? And you write what you wanna write uh, for just it specifically, it should be something along the lines of make sure you use HashiCorp Vault or some uh, password manager, don't write things in config maps, things like that. And then you wrote that, it took like this much, and you need to add references to how to do this or how to do this for specific technologies or um, what kind of um, compliance, national or regulatory or other compliance you, like, is relevant to these um, requirements. So you add a link to OWASP top 10, you add the link to CWE123, CWE456, Proactive Control C6, and then three other standards that you know are relevant. What happens a while later, Proactive con uh, your developers come back and they tell you, okay, what is C6? Like, uh, is that a new club? Uh, I, I was inserted, so I couldn't find it. Uh, you go, another developer goes to standard Y and they moved it because the domain changed or they changed the content management system and now it's obsolete. A while later, Z becomes an old version because somebody updated it. And then there is probably half a dozen great resources that are missing. So what do you do? You copy all the resources over to your document. So now you spend extra time to read and digest all resources. Good, maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. Uh, but also maybe half of it is not your, expect uh, your ex expertise. So part of it is outdated. Uh, other is maybe inconsistent. Uh, you cannot fit half the internet on one article that would be impractical. So it's definitely incomplete. And in general, it's way bulkier. And because it's copied information from elsewhere that has definitely changed since you copied it, it's fragmented. Now, if you take a step back and you try to see it as like the was testing guide or MASVS, and you try to link to CAPEC or NIST, or from even from one OWASP project to the other, you end up with this, whatever this is, this spaghetti thing. Um, and it's too much work. And for example, if you write MASVS, you should be an expert in mobile security. Why the hell should you know about Capric? Or why should you know about NIST? You're not an auditor, you're not a standards writer. Well, you are a standards writer, but you're not an auditor. And you should have nothing to do with NIST or testing guide. You should know only what you should be doing. As an example, and to drive the point home, there is a great initiative here in the UK, IoT security mapping, which try to map IoT security standards from a hundred sources. First, shocking that there are a hundred standards for IoT. Second, 
a hundred sources. Here's how the graph looks like. And these are general topics. It can just be zoomed in and becomes worse. And the result was a few thousand pages of JSON. And it was a very useful uh, effort. But the second they published it, it was obsolete because they just copied information. And it's extremely hard to maintain. And imagine doing this for every single security topic out there. Like, that's your life done. Like, you don't sleep, you don't eat, you only map standards. Uh, and so the question is, how can we connect standards at the requirement level? So say I have ASVS 402, which uh, needs more info on encryption. So how do I connect it to NIST that? And how do I connect the same thing on more info on how to test this, which is super important for somebody who reads ASVS, right? Like say you have uh, an auditor or a high level manager who wants to follow ASVS and they want to provide uh, their CISO or some other auditor uh, a link to NIST saying, we do encryption and a link to testers saying, hey, guys, can you please test like using this because it's important to us. And also, how can I make sure that oh, I only write this once or like twice because typos, not like every month, right? Because like this shouldn't be your life, maintaining just a mapping. It's, it's not a life, man. So our spare solution, and how we started CRE was, well, let's invent a mapping standard because you know that's what you do. And you add topics and for every NIST or every uh, WSTG, CAPEC, MASVS, you figure out what it links to and you link to it. And then you, have, you end up with a huge spreadsheet that you visualize any way you want and that's it, you have your links done, right? Well, that's how it looked at the beginning. Um, and you could easily figure out that uh, MASVS auth 2, uh, version 4.2, links to one tw uh, CRE 125 for 87, because you always need the uh, ID, uh, which is called secure session token generation. And by visiting the central CRE, you can find information on all the supported standards. Well, good enough, right? But then we went on NIST, huge beast. And we saw that NIST has a topic called cryptography, like nothing else. Like here's everything you need to know about cryptography. And we thought, okay, we have half a dozen or maybe three dozen CREs on cryptography. Do we make NIST link to like, um, 24, 36, whatever uh, CREs, that would be impractical. You would go to one high level topic and it would, you wouldn't know what, which link to follow. So we created high, higher level topics because, well, things in security are always higher level and you can always drill down. And we create, we, so we link um, NIST, uh, storing secrets, to topic C, uh, like secret storage, which in itself uh, branches out to how to store secrets, uh, how to do specific cryptography on secrets, how to test for like secret storage, proper secret storage, or how to test for proper secret storage on Kubernetes or using Haskell Vault or using a password manager, or you know, writing it on a post-it and putting it on your screen. That's what we all do, right? So we did that. And then MASVS released another version and we were at square one because we had to go back and update all the mockings. And that sucked. Uh, it was not fun time. It was also during the holidays. So, you know, like how you spend, I don't know how you guys spend Christmas, but I do mockings, right? I, I love writing on a spreadsheet. Uh, snow falling, spreadsheets, compiling, you know. Um, so we came up with solution three, who maps? What's a map? It doesn't make sense. Instead of us mapping things, let standards come to us. So uh, pretty much we started doing PR and we tried to convince people, which we managed successfully many times to 
add links from their standards to opencri.org. And then instead of creating mappings for content that changes, we created parsers, automated parsers for formats that hopefully change less often than content. Because if you write in like markdown files, like AESVS does or testing guide does, eh, likely you're not gonna convert to Word documents anytime soon. Well, hopefully. Um, if anybody from the testing guide is here or sees that and you wanna convert to docx, please talk to me. So I can convince you not to. So enter CRE as it is uh, now. Uh, we combined all these solutions to one linking problem as the result of extensive research that we started two years ago. And we did interviews with standard makers, uh, procurement people, um, thank you everyone, several of them are here, um, industry experts, uh, some academia, like faculty members, engineers, testers, certification bodies, you name it. And uh, this work was done as part of the integration standards project. So the great draw diagram you saw at the beginning. And uh, the idea was to bring OWASP projects and beyond uh, more together, kind of make it easy to find information on each other. And we launched it in beta last September. Um, these are the people uh, that created it, uh, myself, Elisad, uh, and Rob Vanderveer and many, many friends. Uh, special thanks to the SKF team. They had the original mappings that they provided. Very thankful for that. Um, we built it on conversations with stakeholders. Of course, you cannot create something like that in isolation. That would be mad. And so we got feedback from top 10 ASVS, SKF, uh, OpenSSF, uh, many developers from the community. And in the end, we created an interactive content linking platform uh, for uniting security standards and guidelines. Um, it's, you can find it at opencre.org. Uh, yeah, it has mappings on ASVS top 10, NIST 63 and 53, because different versions matter. Uh, proactive controls, cheat sheets, uh, testing guide and CWG. Uh, it contains the linking mechanism I showed where we parse the standards, uh, the standards content automatically and we don't just read it, understand it and create more spreadsheets, that would be mad. And here's an example of a topic structure so that uh, you can see how it looks like. Essentially it's a graph. In our days, everything is a graph. Um, so say you want to start from uh, ASVS 6.11 uh, down here, which says encrypt regulated personal data at rest. Cool. Um, this in ASVS uh, markdown links to uh, CRE of encrypt personal data at rest, which either links to personal data handling, so you can find NIST uh, specific requirements, or you can follow the path all the way to cryptography with the specific uh, WSTG uh, on how to test for weak encryption. So you find out how to test for uh, if your uh, personal data address is properly encrypted, or you find uh, relevant CWU information on missing encryption of sensitive data, which I guess if you're vulnerable to that, you don't have it. It kind of makes sense, right? And now give a prayer to the demo gods because hopefully this will work. Yes. So let's see how I'm gonna do this. Not this. Also not this, also not this, this. Um, hang on. I think your mouse is, oh, it just needs convincing. So opencherry.org is the website. As you see, my CSS skills are incredible. 
Uh, as I keep joking, I write code that the pen tester would write. No pen tester Python. It needs to run only once for the POC. That's it. I applied all these skills to OpenCRE.org. So, uh, this laptop is too secure. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, I'm impressed your laptop can reach GitHub. Uh, so this is the cheat sheet, as you see in the URL, uh, for uh, secrets management. So uh, this is the use case. Um, in the cheat sheet, there is a link to opencre.org, and the parser automatically has found the markdown file that has the string opencre.org and has extracted uh, the specific CRE ID that links to it and links to secret storage. As you see, more awesome CSS keys. Um, so, and uh, secret storage is tagged cryptography because, well, of course it is. Um, and it links to the specific cheat sheet as, as you saw, and the OWASP wrong secrets project by the way, fantastic project, super actively maintained. If you need to find out how not to do secrets management, that's it. Um, and so here's a training application on what not to do. Here's a thing on what you should do and what automated um, solutions you should put in place. But also, how to do secrets management? Well, at some point you need to use cryptography of some sort of another. And cryptography is linked by this NIST 53, um, or perhaps you don't care about cryptography. Well, you should, but fine. Um, perhaps you have a security module and um, what is linked to this specific CRE, uh, ASVS 282, CWE 320, and these NIST um, 63 items. And you can click on any of them to go to that specific page where it tells you first what is the original reference and what it's linked to uh, as a CRE. Uh, if I go back, yeah. And it has, to keep it short, it has many, many, many more uh, CREs uh, linked to. And because it's a high level topic, uh, as we said, like CRE is a graph. Well, everything is a graph. It has uh, many more um, other subtopics, um, such as here's how to store credential security uh, securely, uh, or how to do the same thing, but with cryptographic keys. Uh, different regulatory bodies have wildly different requirements on what to do with cryptographic keys, ranging from it's OK to put it on a drawer and forget about it to you need Fort Knox. Um, and several um, other things, uh, including implementation on how to do it with Bcrypt, uh, how to do it with PBK, DEF2, and others. And you can even go upwards uh, on here how to, here's how to do secure data storage. And here's a nice top 10 on it. And here's the kind of sister topics to the previous CRE, backups, data access control, how to encrypt data at rest, temporary storage, secret storage, secure random values. Goes on, goes forth. I'm not going to bore you more with this. <laughs> so as you see, from one simply, like one link in one standard, we can explore pretty much the entire graph of CREs and other topics and learn a lot more information, including regulatory high-level information. So if you are an AppSec engineer like I am, what you need to tell auditors when they come knocking or what you need to tell your boss so he doesn't bother you much. And also uh, super low-level implementation information so you know what to send uh, the devs, how to implement it, or even what tools you need to use and with which uh, rules. For example, if I type zap, Here's every single ZAP rule. And with links, let's click on this. 
let's at least click on this, uh, with links to specific, uh, like the code of the Zapru, so you know how the XSS can like works and if it will find things in your application because perhaps it won't. And also, here's how to protect against it. So it's by just traversing the tree. Oh, by the way, this is an API behind it. It doesn't, you don't need to do it on a browser. So you can automate 99% of this. So with, you can build something like if a, that specific ZAP scan, uh, ZAP rule uh, triggered or is in the report, uh, go here, pull the specific proactive control, uh, pull the specific CWE or the testing guide and enhance your results. And you can do this automatically. Now, if we go back, there we go. So as a summary, this enables alignment and cross-reference between security standards and guidelines. And as an extra, it makes it easier for standard makers to create and maintain standards because you no longer need to link to everybody else. You need to link to one immutable topic, like one link to one website instead of 50 links. Uh, you, it's easier to find and use relevant information for engineers. Uh, security officers, testers, procurement, pretty much anyone who's interested in security, you go to one website, filter by the uh, standard that applies to you or what you're looking for and just see uh, filtered for the information that is important to you. And as a bonus, it allows people to speak the same language. Uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but every time I talk to uh, specific auditors for very specific regulatory bodies, for example, uh, Singapore, they reference something from their local regulator, which I have no idea about because, well, I'm not in Singapore. And I need to sift through like a ton of information every time to find out what they mean. And by the time I talk to them again, two years later, it changes and I need to do it again. But if we all talk CRE or uh, opencre.org, uh, we all know what we're talking about. And as a bonus, it has more consistency and less gaps between standards. If ASVS uh, regarding, uh, excuse me, if ASVS regarding sessions uh, links to the same CRE uh, as MASVS regarding sessions, you know how to do sessions. Doesn't matter if you have a web page or a mobile app, which honestly, it's kind of the same. Uh, so currently we are adding way more standards and uh, both, standard, uh, both standards and tools. Uh, you saw Zap, I'm talking to um, core, rule set, core rule set from uh, OWASP and uh, SKF. And uh, in the future, we're gonna have gap analysis. In fact, we already have gap analysis, just not on the front end, because you know, amazing front end skills. Um, we are going to have a better graph visualization. Uh, this is not how a graph should look like. <laughs> and um, eventually, I want to have personal profiles uh, so that you all can filter information based on what you're interested in and save it, which kind of makes sense. And um, of course, versioning and time snapshots in time, because uh, most of us are interested on regulatory requirements or uh, information at a certain point in time so that we can freeze it and only get notified about updates when there are updates. So what I need from you? Uh, well, obviously use this thing. It's, it's cool. It took a long time to make. And if you're interested, if it sounds good, please use it. Um, we are on GitHub. Uh, we're an OWASP project. Um, we're open to any feedback, any ideas. If you know how to code, especially if you know how to code front ends, please contribute. <laughs> Super important. Um, and also, if you have any mappings, uh, I don't have any delusions that PCI is going to come to us, for example, uh, or ISO, and they want uh, us to be like CREs to be in the source. But if you have the mappings, even on spreadsheets, uh, we can parse them and we can keep parsing them, and that's fine. Uh, we have a mailing list. 
we have a website under OWASP, and you can find us in uh, project integration standards in um, OWASP Slack. And yeah, if you are, if by any chance this reaches any standards writer, uh, please use CRE. It's gonna make your lives easier. Uh, links to other standards will never break so long as CRE exists, and we plan on it existing for a long time. Um, your standard will become instantly accessible. No need to download PDFs or, God forbid, doc documents. Uh, all your viewers will have access to a large range of super related uh, resources, so you won't need to uh, link to random topics yourself. And of course, uh, we have meetings every week. Uh, you can join our meetings. They are on the OWASP uh, calendar. Thank you very much. So I know that what I just said sounds amazing and it's super detailed and you understood everything, but are there any questions? Sounds fantastic. Hi, Petra. I hope I'm not butchering your name. Ah, <laughs> hi. Um, glad you're hiring too first. Uh, second, uh, the first iteration was manual. So let me go back to the slides. So this, uh, about a year and a half ago, was manual. There is a monster spreadsheet that tested the Google Sheets capabilities that did that. Uh, pretty much, we copy-pasted spreadsheets we found from regulatory bodies and um, some of the big four con consultancies because they leave their stuff on the internet, and that's cool. Um, but eventually, we realized after that, this is not a way to live. So we did that. And right now we have CRAs into ASVS, MASVS, SKF, and um, a few other uh, regulatory bodies. Again, I have no delusions that CAPEC, for example, or DNSA will come to us. That would be super cool, but I don't think it will happen anytime soon. Uh, I will definitely try. So for big, big players, we, we do the mappings ourselves, but it's way less work than having to map the entire internet. And at least for OWASP standards or, well, open source standards that develop on GitHub, uh, much easier to, to just parse the source. Okay. Any more questions from the audience? Oh, Petra, sorry, I'll give you a microphone. Uh, you asked about uh, also. Yeah, you can do it in natural language processing because that would be much easier. You just give it a data set and you label it with a, oh, sorry, oh, Jesus. <laughs> you give it. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> you give it a topic as you, so you label a data set with topics um, and you give an algorithm and the, and then you do a web scraper and just scrapes the web and gets you everything in front of you. Um, yeah, I tried. Um, with, with machine learning? With NLP, yeah. Uh, I okay. used a tool, I think it's called PyNLP. Uh, okay. Cool. Well, I'm a security person, not an NLP researcher. Uh, so my efforts were contained in, I think, a couple of weeks. Uh, okay. It got somewhere, but it wasn't robust enough to make it. So like to make it, well, resilient. Uh, that's why we thought that it makes a lot of sense for standards makers to link to us uh, because then they can choose what they want to link. Um, they want to link to, or even filter the information that the page wants to sh they want to show, which kind of makes sense uh, because not all standards makers want to link to every single thing. But if you know about NLP <laughs> and you can help, uh, we we take contributions. That would be okay, fantastic. Cool, good to know. <laughs> Any more questions? Uh, yeah. Just a quick one. Um, you've gone to all the other standards to get them to integrate into you. What happens when your topics change? Uh, they are supposed to be immutable. 
That's why six digits, um, to paraphrase, uh, I think Bill Gates, six digits should be enough for everybody forever, right? Uh, so uh, yeah, like if we ever need more than six digits, uh, we're just gonna add nine digits, like two more. And um, that's it. And hopefully uh, we will never have to change topics. Uh, I have a question. Are these six digits, do they have a pattern of any type? Like CV has a year first and then dash number. Yeah. What's they, the they, pattern? The pattern is they are three numbers divided by a dash and three more numbers. And <laughs> it's the three numbers I have in mind when I issue that uh, specific CI. Okay. And are the first three numbers uh, related to any category, like secrets management or cryptography? Or topic? Mm, not really. Uh, we wanted to keep it quite random uh, so that first people can choose their own. Uh, I think Yerun, the, the, the guy from Wrong Secrets, uh, chose a specific CRD that had meaning to him. Uh, perhaps it's an anniversary, I don't know, he didn't tell me. But um, it's, it's better if it's random. Uh, otherwise, you end up with a category with like one CRE that had five others under it that are empty in case something happens in the future. And you have a lot of fragmentation. And we're not uh, uh, like NTFS drive needing defragmentation. So they're like a random generator, just pick a random number, six digit number. Yeah, like I have a set of DND dice on my desk. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Okay, any more questions? Yeah, there's a question here. You mentioned that uh, uh, please spread the word in the community. And in the, so if you want to uh, spread the word, uh, how can we do that? Like in terms of uh, access to the presentation or uh, some. So these slides are public. Uh, they, you can find them. And I think some. Yeah. So. Yeah. So we have a GitHub repo under common requirements and moderation under OWASP. We have the website, uh, the slides, this talk, uh, the talk we did in September on the 20th anniversary, which they're published, right? Yes. Fine it's all on YouTube. Cool. So, uh, and you can like reach us on the uh, emails or Slack or all these things. Yeah, that's useful. And also, so the main goal of this uh, initiative is like uh, when we share that reports to um, uh, uh, like uh, when we reference the standards of testing guide or any other ASPS. So basically by having this open CRE, we can just reference the open CRE as a link, which basically uh, behind the scene, it maps to all the standards. That's the main objective of this. Exactly. So, you know, when uh, you write a pen test report yeah, and exactly. you need to tell people like, yeah, exactly. But like, here's how to fix it with a cheat sheet. But then the person on the other side uh, grabs the report and they're like, okay, but this cheat sheet tells me nothing. Right? I need to know which regular, which regulations we break or uh, what will happen if we don't fix it. So instead of linking a cheat sheet, link a CRE, and then it will tell you everything you need to know. Yes, one more question. Uh, let me give you the microphone. So you've effectively created another standard. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, pretty Wasn't much. Wasn't the goal to reduce the number of standards? No, uh, there is I, a, I'm, I'm being a little facetious, but no, it looks no, really no, that, good, that, actually. It's uh, in the beginning in these slides, we have the, there is this very popular web comic, uh, XKCD. There is an XKCD comic mm. exactly about this. Mm. Uh, we had it in the slides, but um, we removed it. <laughs> you want me to keep talking? I can. I don't... <laughs> no, okay. no, but this is a great question. Yeah, we did create a new standard that is supposed to be mutable um, and always map things, but Honestly, I couldn't find another way to do it. Uh, perhaps somebody in the future can create another standard that maps to CREs. Uh, have you had any conversations with the CSA and trying to align with the like cloud controls matrix? Because they're kind of doing similar work, mapping multiple standards to one standard. No, but uh, this is already public. So if you have anyone I there and you know them i've just seen it so <laughs> just asking if you've had any conversations no no uh i didn't um this standard does well for OWASP 
uh, but it was easy to expand, uh, kind of trivial actually, to expand. So now that we have it, uh, if these people like are reachable and would be interested in linking to CRE, that would be fantastic. Yeah, if anyone else has input there, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Okay, any more questions? Yeah, talk to me for the mapping project of the CSA, from CSA UK. Oh, yeah, it's just Cloud Security Alliance. <laughs> okay, if there are no more, any, any, any questions? Any more questions? Well done. Okay, so thank you very much, Spiras. That was an amazing talk.